my yarn of bees. It's Sandy. Thanks for joining me today. I'm sorry I haven't been around. Uh, it's been a whirlwind. <laughs> um, Tia has finally gone home. Uh, it's sad. Sad. As soon as she leaves, I, I'm watching her drive away and I get this sadness that comes over me. And I just yeah, the next couple of days, George was at home, uh, but when George went back to work, it was just sadness. I was lost. I was totally lost. I had no what, no idea what to do. I got up, had a bath, came out, and then it was like, now what? So, <laughs> so yeah, it was a lot of fun. Anyways, you may have seen a little bit of a change. Uh, I decided that I was going to bring you guys closer to my yarn and I'm just sitting in a chair and my camera's right there. I have no table, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know. This might be the way I film from now on. It's actually kind of relaxing. Just kind of sit back and yeah. But uh, anyway, um, what have I got to talk to you guys about? Wow. Uh, I just finished the map for the Sister of the Traveling Hook. Sisterhood of the Traveling Hook. Is that what I said? I don't even know anymore. My brain is just a fog. It's an absolute fog. Um, but I will talk to you about that in a minute. I wanted to show you a few things. Sorry, I'm just looking down at my book. I'm actually writing things down now. So I'm not so bleh all over the place. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm totally all over the place. <laughs> Squirrel! <laughs> uh, I meant to do this a couple, a few weeks back, and I it just kind of got put on the side burner, and then things happened, and... Tia came and then I just completely lost track of it and I am so 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 sorry. Uh, as you've probably seen in some other videos, Pamela from Pamela's Drawing Creations had sent out a request for um, YouTubers, various YouTubers to do her pattern for her pocket shawl and then let you guys know what we thought of it. I finished it a while ago and yeah, completely boop, forgot. So I didn't put pockets on mine because I hate putting pockets on pocket shawls. I don't know what it is. I hate sewing. I hate trying to figure out exactly where to put it. And it just, it drives me bananas. So I did mine without. Um, Oh, it's really long. Okay, so here is mine. And I've got the fringe on it. Um, it's going to be kind of hard for me to show you guys. Hang on, let's see if I can bring you back a bit. Sorry about my mess back here, guys. It's it, And my pajama pants. <laughs> just realized I have my pajama pants on. Um, so there it is. And I've got the fringe on the bottom. Absolutely love it. Love it, love it, love it. I really enjoy doing it. Um, I The fringe, I think, looks really good. And I'll bring you guys forward. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm trying to navigate and I've got a dog sitting here too. So yeah. Um, I really enjoyed this pattern. It was so simple to do. Um, it was so simplistic, but it was, it turned out really beautiful, really beautiful. And the funny thing is, is that <laughs> Um, she did it, uh, uh, Pamela did it in a burgundy color 
Lisa, Lisa's crochet did it in a burgundy color and I did it in a burgundy color, except I put um, single crochet all the way around in the darker color and then I did the mixed fringe. I used, what did I use? Oh, yes. I used Premier Basic or Premier Basic, no, wrong, um, Bernat Premium, and this colorway is, the color is burgundy, and then I used, uh, excuse my pajama pants, yes, then I used Premier Serenity Chunky, and this colorway is <laughs> Charcoal Heather. Um, I really, I'll just put this here for now. Did I use that one? Yes, I did. Didn't even know what I used. Um, I, I really, really enjoyed this pattern. It was, it wasn't one that I had to really think about, although I did screw up a few times and had to frog, uh, only because it was so easy that I just blanked out and I was just crocheting and <laughs> I was just lost in, in my thoughts. And so I had to frog back, you know, it's like with the, with the windows here, it's like, you know, a chain two or something. I ended up chaining four or some stupid thing like that because I was just like, blah. Um, but other than that, like, it, it's just, you have to try this pattern. I'll put her link down below. And I mean, I'm sure you guys have all seen it already. But I just, it was really nice. I did, I think I chained... 200 but I did the foundationless double uh, foundationless half double crochet is it it's been a while since I've done it I can't remember if it's half double crochet or single crochet but anyway I think it's half double crochet maybe I, I can't remember anyway go see the pattern um I did the foundationless because and I know there's a lot of people that say I hate doing the foundationless once you get into a rhythm, once you figure it out and you can do it, you'll never go back to doing a chain. The reason for that is because I find when you're doing a long chain like this, it is, it's tight. So that side and then your ending side won't match up because one side will be tight the other side will be loose. So I really like doing the foundationless chain, whatever uh, chain you're doing, crochet, um, single crochet, half double, double, whatever, because it's, it's loose, like it's it not loose, loose, but it's, it's the formation stays the way it's supposed to be. Um, cause I really hate it when I'm doing a blanket or whatever it is and you do that chain and then you do the next row is your regular stitch and it's your blanket ends up like <sighs> the the top chain is is too tight and it kind of bows out a little bit um, when you're doing it. You probably all know what I'm trying to say. So that's why I do it. Uh, yeah, it can be a pain in the butt to do, but I'll tell you it it takes out two rows bam right your chain and your next chain is all done in one and it goes so much faster and it looks so much better so just my thought for the day okay so I did that um penny from little bits of yarn if you're not subscribed to her go go check her out she did a video a couple videos back and 
she has some really great ideas. She really does. One of which was, and of course I didn't bring my mask in. It's a lanyard, whoops, a lanyard for your mask. So if you wear a mask all the time and you take it on and off, you take it off when you're going to your car or whatever, on your break, um, at work or whatever it is, um, you put, you have this on, you have your mask, oops, your mask attached to it with these. And yeah, you just, you can wear it, just put your mask up take it down. You don't have to worry about losing it. You don't have to worry about it falling on the ground and getting dirty. Um, it, you don't have to worry. It's right there, right there. So I made a few of these, but what I did was, um, I did my own, my own thing, my own kind of stitch. I didn't go by anybody else's. Uh, see that? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I did that. I'm debating whether or not to do, if I get enough interest, I'll do a, a tutorial on it. Um, but yeah, I, I was, I really thought this was a brilliant idea. Uh, also she did, she was doing one for kids, but what she did was she did, she put a breakaway clip on it. Uh, I've ordered some breakaway clips. I think they're coming from Asia because the, they don't, I can't seem to find any that are in the United States or anything on Amazon. So I'm waiting for those. Hopefully it won't take too, too long to get here. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's a breakaway clip so that if, you, if the child, um, gets caught on something or if they're outside playing and it hooks on something, it breaks off and it won't hurt them. So I'm just wait, excuse me, waiting for those. And then I'm going to make some of those brilliant, brilliant, brilliant idea, Penny. Um, I just, I thought that was great. So I'm going to be making up a whole bunch of those. Why? Because... I'm so excited. Well, I am and I'm not. Uh, we are finally going to be able to do a craft fair in November. Everybody has canceled their craft fairs. The biggest craft fair that George and I do every year is the Cowichan Ex Exhibition Craft Fair. It's huge. Huge. Uh, so usually we do it at, at the exhibition and they give you a 10 by 10 booth. Oh, I have yarn fiber in my eye. Um, they give you a 10 by 10 booth and a table with tablecloth. And, uh, but this year what they're going to do, so because of COVID, they, they can't, do it in the actual um, building, um, what they're going to do, holy cow, what they're going to do is they're going to do it outside. George and I have done, I think it was the first craft fair we ever did there. We did it outside because they had no more tables inside. And I was really worried about that. I thought, oh, it's going to be cold. It was the best craft fair we ever did. Uh, because it was cold and I was selling hats and, and whatnot, we sold our stuff like crazy. It was insane. So this is going to be really good. I'm really hoping it's going to go well. And there are going to be a few things this year that I'm going to be introducing to my collections. One of is my sweaters. So it's going to be really interesting to see how they sell um, I'm really hoping that I didn't make all of them for nothing. <sighs> uh, so, uh, the pocket shawls are also going to be a new feature, um, maybe without pockets. <laughs> so, 
uh, and then the the mask lanyards. Um, what else? I don't even know what else. Uh, I last year I did the bag of day. Um, what's it called? The kerchief cowl scarf thing cowl thing i did a whole bunch of those and i sold out of them i'm not sure if i'm gonna do them again this year i think i'm just gonna leave that one and do other things I'm, i really want to do my display differently this year i want to do smaller things like the lanyards um i don't know i i just don't know I have to think about it, but, uh, yeah. Okay. So I made another pocket shawl without the pockets. So I guess it's just a scarf shawl thing. Um, I did this one with, what's it called? Oh no. Um, it's like the homespun, but it's not homespun. Oh, there it is. Okay, don't know what happened there. My camera just kind of decided it was going to shut off. Um, I can't remember. I think I did chain a uh, three double crochet, chain one, go into. No, I don't think I chained in between. I don't know. Chain one and then go into the second stitch, dub, three double crochet, chain one, and go into this. Anyway. So that's the way it turned out. Oh, that's the way it turned out. I just absolutely love, look at the sparkle in that. Oh, so pretty, so pretty and so warm. I just, I really love that. I'm working on another um, pocket shawl, not, not pocket shawl. Uh, it's my own design and everybody's coming out with a pocket shawl. So I don't know if I'm going to do a tutorial on it or not. It's done with the cluster stitch. It is a bit of a yarn eater, but I think it's going to look really nice when it's done. Um, so I'm not going to bother showing it to you yet because I'm not that far into it. Uh, what else? I made, I made a couple hats, no big deal. Just mindless, mindless hats like that uh, that's the cluster stitch and then I made this one oops made that one oh hang on let's try these on why don't we so this one has the very first pocket shawl that came out that had that T stitch, the double crochet, and then the double crochet around the post. Um, that's the stitch I did in this hat. So I don't know if you can see it right there. So I did a couple of rows of that. Um, this one's the one I just showed you. It's kind of a slouchy. That's the um, cluster stitch. I'm not even looking at the camera. The camera's over here, not over here. Ugh. This one is the same as the other one. I haven't put my tag on it yet. But this is the the post going around the post stitch. I don't even know what that stitch is called. But it's a really pretty stitch and I really like it. This yarn, this blue yarn is amazing. Um, and I forgot to save the... It's a Michaels brand. And it, you can't get it now. Because it's uh, not in season. <laughs> Comes in the squishy ball. It's not the cream cotton. It's... Oh, I can't remember. Anyway, I wish I had bought more of this because it's absolutely beautiful. So, yeah. 
So there's that. Um, God, my hair looks like a mess today. Okay, so I did those. Uh, and then I got an order, another order from Hirschner's. I don't think I showed this to you because I just got it a couple days ago, I think. Um, okay, so I got, did I show it to you? I don't think think I no I don't think I did okay I got some premier serenity chunky of course I'm getting ready for the winter right isn't that pretty it is uh, stormy and this stuff was on sale I got four of them I believe and then I got the same one in Majesty. And I got four of those. No, I didn't. I got more than that. I thought I did. I think I got six each. Uh, and then I got some of the color, Red Heart Color Scape. This is Munich. Isn't that gorgeous? And I got two, no, six, nine of these, I think. Oh! <laughs> I got so many, I can't hold on to them. So I was thinking about doing a sweater <clears throat> with those, but I don't know. We'll see. And then I got... I've never tried this before, but it's Premier Mega Tweeds. Isn't that pretty? And this color is Black Tweed. Hello. And I got six, seven of these. Why did I get seven? Maybe that was a typo I did. But anyways, they were all on sale. I think they're like usually on sale with uh, with Premier. Um, I've, I always go into the clearance or the sale. Sorry, I'm just putting this stuff back in the box so I don't trip on it. Um, I usually look in the clearance or sales first and then I go to the other stuff. But the serenity chunky was on for 2.99 and the mega tweed was on for 4.99 and the colorscape was on for 3.49 i think they're still on for that pretty sure something else i wanted to tell you guys for all of you that have been with me throughout the year uh some of the new people probably don't know about this but and I've mentioned it a couple of times, but um, last year, uh, my sister was diagnosed with cerebral Wegner's. She had four brain surgeries in two months, and she has been taking this whole year to try and come back from that. And it was pretty scary. We didn't think that she was going to make it back. And um, she has been doing <sighs> wonderful, wonderful uh, her surgeon, not her surgeon, her um, specialists and everything have been saying that she is going in leaps and bounds in her recovery. Um, she's still taking the, um, the IV. I can't even remember what it's called. <laughs> but anyways, it's to help shrink the uh, masses that are in her brain. Um, I'm not sure. I think she's doing it every six months, but, uh, she's now her prednisone is down. They're trying to get her down to five milligrams. She's at 7.5 or something. And she's having a little bit of an issue with that. It's, it's still giving her some problems. Um, she was doing really good. And then they went and shifted her, 
her melatonin or her melatonin, her prednisone. And also she had an IV uh, session treatment. So her balance was a little off and her vision's a little off. Um, if you want to see the whole story, I have a playlist in my playlist. I have some videos called um, uh, Charlene or um, my, I, I think it's called my sister's fight with um, Cerebral Wagner's or, or Wagner's or something like that. But anyways, it's in my in my playlist if you want to see the whole story of what happened. Anyways, I went and go, went, got, went and gone. Yeah, <laughs> I went to go visit her uh, with Tia and we went, took her and my niece Michelle out for lunch and we had such a great time. We laughed. Oh, we laughed and laughed and laughed and just like tears, crying, laughter. And it was so good to see my sister laugh again and be almost her usual self because we never thought that that was going to happen and um it, <laughs> it's it's kind of funny but it's not kind of funny but anyways she still has issues with her hearing uh she has to wear hearing aids so when we're talking sometimes she doesn't quite get what she what we're saying so um, she'll end up saying something that is completely different than what we were talking about. And then we would just roar. We would laugh so hard. And it's so nice to see that she's taking it in good spirits. But some of this stuff is just so way off base. It's hilarious. But anyways, um, we, we had a great time. And she also, my sister was also saying that she is willing to do a video uh, to finally get on video and talk to you all um, about uh, her journey and to thank you all for the wonderful, wonderful support that you gave her when this was all going on. She's still overwhelmed by it all. I'm overwhelmed by it all. You guys were, um, I just, I have no words. Um, it was a very scary time in our lives and you guys just came like an army um, just coming and supporting us and helping us out and we can never repay you for that. Um, so she's going to be doing a video with me hopefully soon, but I just wanted to show you a little picture of what she looks like now. And she, if you see the pictures and everything from before, she does look different, but I love her all the same. And, um, and just to be able to, to be able to look at her, um, is huge, huge. So there you go. Now let's get on to the dun, da, 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 the sisterhood of the traveling hook. Sisterhood, brohood. Although I never got any bros. There weren't any bros that wanted to be a part of this. But I did get a whole bunch of people that wanted to be involved. But as you're going to see in this next clip, there's a whole section of the United States that doesn't have anybody. I'm not going to have any more people join this time round because it's already at, what, what, what did I say here? It's already at 48 weeks between Canada and the U.S. And then the next, for the Australia, I have three people from Australia and one person from the Netherlands. So that's going to be eight weeks in itself. Um, so I... Oops, I mean, that's almost a year, right? And I don't want people to lose interest. I'm going to try and make it as fun as I possibly can. Uh, I'm going to keep track of where it's going next, and I will let you know, and I will show you on the map where it's going. Uh, and so 
yeah I've got everything together I just have to print out the letter that goes with it and I bought some um, some wipes that go with it but it's in a huge pack so I got to figure out I got to go to the dollar store and figure out like a smaller container or something because I really I want to put it in one of the big melanin envelopes and keep it as cost effective for everybody as I can um so yeah so I'm I'm almost ready to start shipping it as soon as I figure that part out uh, I will have it in the mail I'm hoping it's going to be in the mail by next week I'm so excited <laughs> uh, yeah so there was some people that didn't go on the list that I really thought would have gone on the list and I hope I didn't miss anybody that wanted to be on the list I'm really I'd be really sad um, if I did miss somebody let me know right away uh, and I will see if I can add you to the list I've got so many people on the list for um in Ontario and they're all in a little patch it's crazy so um yeah I don't think I'd want any more from Ontario because it's just it's already crazy but guess who decided to join the list Debbie the Canadian crotcheter I was like fan growing just a little bit <laughs> I won't lie uh, I was so happy that she joined us uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be great it's gonna be really good uh, she's in between houses right now um, she's rebuilding or building no renovating her new cottage so I'm hoping that it's gonna get to her before she moves it should be fine because there's Mm, I might send it to her first, um, the first person in Ontario, and then send it around to the others just because uh, of her her moving. Um, yeah. So I will show you the clip of the map and show you. I, I actually, I'm starting to understand the geography of the states now a little bit <laughs> it's like where's michigan where's <laughs> where's new york where's... it's like i had no idea <laughs> i had no idea that ontario went that far down i thought why isn't ontario part of the u.s then it, it makes no sense to me but anyways i was just kind of like it it was a little mind-blowing for me so i will show you that clip now okay everybody so I am done my map I think and this is the map of the USA if you can tell uh, there's very little Canada on this map and there's no Australia or Netherlands but the Australians and Netherlands are over there so I have to get a map made up for that Okay, so I'm going to go through this. I'm not taking any more um, people for this round of the traveling hook because um, there's a lot of people on here and it's just going to take too long. It's already going to take about a year. So I'm going, ooh. <laughs> Hopefully people don't get too bored waiting. So, uh, but I'm going to try and make it as interesting as possible. Um, I'm really surprised that all in here there isn't anybody, but I hopefully I didn't miss anyone. Uh, if I did, let me know. Okay, so we're going to go through this. I'm not too sure how I'm going to do this yet. Um, I know I'm going to take it through Canada first. And then I'm not too sure because the last person... That gets this has to send it to Australia and that makes me a little nervous because um, actually no they don't because I'm doing a separate hook for that aren't I okay never mind scratch that 
Um, okay. So here we go. We have, we've got a lot in Ontario. Holy smokes. Okay, so we have Isla Brown. She is in Edmonton, Alberta. Um, she will be the very first one to get the hook, I believe. Then we have Cindy uh, Crochet A in Winnipeg and Darla Crafty Yarn Owls in Winnipeg. And then we go, oh, look at this jumble. We have a lot of us, a lot of our Yarny sisters in Ontario. And they are all very close to each other. So <laughs> this is going to be fun. Um, okay, so we have Debbie, Canadian crotcheter. Uh, and then we have, um, I'm not sure about Debbie yet because she should still be in her, in the house that she's in. Um, so hopefully we'll be able to keep it there. Uh, then we got Lisa, Lisa's crochet in Dunsford. Then we got, um, Cindy, or sorry, Crystal from Ricola Crystal Crochet Corner in Oshawa. And Cynthia, uh, Sin's Crafting World in Kitchener. Uh, we've got, oh, what do we got here? Okay, then we're going to go over to, I think we're going to go to Sherry from Sherry K. Loves uh, Yarn and Hook in Pulteney, um, Massachusetts, I think that is. Uh, then we're going to go to Kim's Affordably Crafty, uh, craft, uh, Affordably Crafty in Tunton, Massachusetts, I think that is, or no, uh, yeah, okay, and then we're going to go over to Rosalie at Yarn It Out in Lakewood, uh, Lynette at Charm Granny Crochet in Garfield Heights. Then Hope from Hopeful Craft in Inwood, uh, Virginia. I think that's Virginia. Uh, and then I'm thinking we're going to go to Kim at Metal Scrap Chick in Ashland, Kentucky. And then Marianne at Crochet, um, Crotchety Clogger in Thomasville. Um, where is that? <laughs> that is in North Carolina. Then Linda, just a crochet sister in um, Georgia. Is that Georgia? I think that's Georgia. Cummings, Georgia. And then Karen, uh, yarn addict with Karen in Bowdoin, Georgia. No, nope. Alabama. Sorry. Uh, Tracy, I love Loopy Crochet in Reform, Alabama. Then it goes up to my sister Sandy at Left Is Right Crochet in Kansas City. And then it goes all the way over here to Trisha Mama Swift. Um, and she is in California. And then she sends it up to Oregon. At Nancy, Nancy at Nan's Next Knots at Roseburg. Um, and then I think I'm going to go to the outer parts of Washington and do, um, is it Helene or Helena? at Cabin Fever Crochet in Loon Lake, Washington. Then Crystal Chronically Crochet uh, in Newport, Washington. And then the last person is going to be Linda Crochet Chica in Washington. I think that's going to be the way I'm going to do it. And then I will do a separate hook for um, 
Jody Witch Piece Craft in Queensland, Australia. Squishy, say it with Squishy in Victoria, Australia. And Mel uh, Colors of the Outback in Western Australia. And then it goes, I'm not sure if it's going to go to Australia first or the Netherlands first. I got to look at a map. Um, it, <clears throat> Wilma Whimsy's Creative. And I can't even pronounce the name in Netherlands, but uh, it's probably going to go to the Netherlands and then Australia and then back to me. So I think I've got it figured out. <laughs> I hope. Um, anyways, I just wanted to show this to you guys. Wow. Like it's, it's just kind of cool the way it's going to go. <laughs> then do, 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 do. over to here and over to here and then back up there and then back to me because I am, where am I? I am, can you see that? I don't think you can see that, but I am, this is Victoria, BC, and I am right in there somewhere. So that is where I am. So yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be a lot of fun. I can't wait. And if it goes really well, then maybe next year I'll do it again with different people. So, okay, just wanted to show that to you. joining me guys I hope you enjoyed that uh, and I hopefully will have more to show you as the weeks go on uh, I will do a little video clip of me sending off the hook of course and I will talk to you guys later I guess I guess that's all I have to say okay I love you all and uh, take care of yourself okay love you Mwah. bye